So, Jet Booster Heavy Tanks have been out for a couple days now and I have played with every single one of those. So in today's video I'm going to let you know a quick review about every single one of those vehicles. Basically everything you need to know about those tanks in a short form review. Because day one since those tanks were released I started playing with them and I worked my way up from tier 7 all the way up to tier 10. First up BZ58 which looks pretty cool, one of the coolest looking tanks or the slickest looking tanks over here but uh, what it has to offer besides the loops as well and uh, I was testing it with both guns actually it has two guns the stock 85 mm gun and the top 100 mm gun and I have to be honest over here I did enjoy the stock gun more than the top gun actually now in this battle you see me using the top gun with 320 alpha uh, but the stock gun has 220 alpha but at the same time the stock gun is more accurate it has better aiming time and it has a lot better dpm when fully set up and equipped up it had over 400 extra dpm now of course it comes with some negative things as well for example penetration this stock gun is definitely going to struggle a lot more in the higher tier battles when you're facing tier 8s tier 9s all the time then the stock gun simply doesn't have too much penetration and you are not able to go through uh, many tanks uh, it has 220 millimeters of penetration which should be good enough for weak spots but you know aiming at the weak spots uh, while you are trying to stay safe yourself versus higher tier tanks you know this is not uh, the easiest thing to do and overall i would say if you use the stock gun it is going to increase the skill cap this of this tank you. and you need to be a bit better player to make it worth and the top gun having 100 extra alpha better penetration on the standard round and on the primo round as well simply makes it a better trader that said it is also more turpier the aiming time feels forever and half honestly the aiming time on the top gun is just what killed it for me so the gun handling uh, overall I would say is not anything special on this vehicle now armoring I can say it holds up in the same tier matchmaking in uh, tier 7 matches in some tier 8 matches as well when there are not too many tier 8s who are easily able to penetrate you because the face of the turret is 220 and most of the tier 8 tanks are easily able to penetrate it even when you are hull down and even you know when you do not have any commander hatches they simply shoot the face of your turret and they are able to penetrate you it has the auto bounce basically auto bounce upper plate which is nice but at the same time it has quite a massive lower plate which is easily penetrable by everything this tank sees overall armoring i would say is average for this tier you have to be hull down to make it work in the first place the mobility is okay i would say it is quite a nice introduction for this line it has a free jet booster charges not four not five but three as a little introduction in tier seven and i would say this is enough for this vehicle another thing to mention definitely is the low view range 350 meters which is uh, one of the lowest in its tier but overall i would give it uh, a solid 6.9 i did not love the vehicle but i didn't hate it either and my gaming experience so far with this was okay so 6.9 moving on next up tier 8 the bz166 and this tank definitely was my least favorite tank uh, in this entire jet booster deck tree line or branch this tank was just not fun to play for me personally maybe you feel different if you do congratulations but for me the gun was just way too turpy to enjoy it and the overall play style how sluggish it was and uh, like in the tier 8, 9, 10 battles, um, I didn't uh, enjoy too many battles in it. Yes, I had a couple good games, but you can have good games in every single tank in this game. And uh, to be honest, there is absolutely nothing to compare uh, between this tank and the BZ-176, which is the tier 8 premium heavy tank, jet booster heavy tank, which is basically like a tier 9 or tier 8 and a half premium tank, to be fair with you guys. Uh, but this tank has quite a meme uh, setup over here check this out guys so this is the vehicle with the top turret right and this is the vehicle with stock turret you have way better armoring in the stock turret or with the stock turret than with the top turret stock turret basically gives you more armor better angles plus it removes weak spots as well but of course it comes with uh, some big negative things as well you're losing some reload time you're losing some aim time so some dpm loss uh, you're losing 50 extra hit points and also your view range is going to be 330 meters which in tier 8 is um, 
like tier 5 level of view range what you're getting. But that said, even the top turret gives you only 350 meters view range. I don't understand why they balance this tank or why they try to balance this tank, TIS and tier 7 as well, with absolutely garbage view range. 350 meters in tier 8. This is one of the lowest view range you can see in tier 8. It is, it is silly. Now, mobility, it has four charges, which is nice, you know, one extra charge compared to the tier 7. But uh, still, as I said, the overall mobility simply felt super sluggish. And the overall, the only thing what was keeping me in the game in many battles uh, when I was trying to chase the final enemy vehicles or trying to get into good early positions or run away from some bad positions uh, where the jet boosters. But once you are out of toes, uh, you are not really going to enjoy the mobility that much because 30 top speed with uh, without turbo or 35 with turbo. I was using a rammer, a turbo and a destabilizer on this. Uh, yeah, you know, I could boost the view range as well, but uh, if you have so ridiculously low view range already, why should I boost it? I better help out the gun a bit or the them a bit or the mobility to be closer to my enemies, uh, so I'm not going to miss that much and I do not need to worry about the spotting anyway, right? So it was a weird one. But uh, ramming some tanks, uh, like over here, you know, that's always nice. You're able to do that using the jet boosters. Or, as I said before, catching up the final kills if you have some boosters saved up. Now, as I said, I was using it with uh, stabilizer, rammer and turbo. There are definitely some other setups as well. Without turbo, you can use ventilation. Or uh, you can switch out the stabilizer for improved aiming. I've heard some people enjoy this tank more with improved aiming, for example. You can test it out uh, what first what works best for you but my overall personal experience in this vehicle was honestly five out of ten tops right good alpha but turpy gun and quite a boring gameplay or play style uh, moving on Coming from my least favorite tank, which was tier 8 BZ-166, into my favorite tank in this entire line, BZ-68 tier 9 jet booster heavy tank. And I gotta say, I actually did enjoy it. I enjoyed it very, very much. I enjoyed it more than uh, tier 8, tier 7, tier 10 as well. It is uh, just, you know, I like a couple things about that. So let's talk about what I like about this vehicle. I actually do like the uh, gun on this tank. Yes, once again, it is quite derpy, but compared to what this line, like the entire line has already, how derpy the tier 10 gun gonna be, how derpy the tier 8 gun is, um, you know, those two gun options in tier 7 as well. Comparing all those things, to have a 530 Alpha, which is very juicy in tier 9, to have 530 Alpha and with a test gun handling was just enough for me to still enjoy it. Uh, for, uh, sorry, 248 millimeters of standard AP penetration, I like that it has AP as the standard round, and 315 heat penetration gives it very nice flexibility uh, in the uh, pen penetration department as well. I do enjoy AP more than APCR for sure. And that 530 Alpha makes it quite a nice trader as well. You're able to outrate most of the tier 9 vehicles. Some tier 10s even you're able to outrate that has uh, 490 Alpha for example or 400, 440 around that. That makes you quite a nice trader in this vehicle. And I started off very hot in this tank. Uh, after my first four battles ever in the BZ-68 my average raw damage not combined but raw damage was 5200. But I knew that this can only go downhill from there because this tank definitely is not 5k tank, at least not in my hands. And right now it is around 3.6, 3.7, 3.5 around here after 20 plus battles. Which uh, I've, I feel like where I could hold it, uh, the damage number at least. And uh, I was not expecting that from this vehicle, but uh, I do enjoy the gun, even though it can be derpy, yes. But you know, depending uh, or thinking about uh, which tanks I was playing before that, I quite enjoyed it. And uh, the armoring um, can hold up. Uh, it has commander hatch and this is what uh, most uh, enemy tanks are able to penetrate on you if you are hull down your commander hatch which is not the easiest not the biggest commander hatches and it is actually positioned a bit in the uh, back part or in the rear of the turret as well not in the front or not exactly in the center 
and when you are hull down it is not the, the easiest uh, commander hatches to hit um, i know that uh, simply by shooting other pieces at 68s as well when they are hull down and the face of the turret is quite strong uh, the armoring overall is solid it is not the best but it is definitely solid it is holding up uh, for sure and mobility this is uh, a vehicle which gets another extra charge uh, so it has five boost charges uh, tier 7 had three tier 8 had four and this one has five and that five actually helps it out quite a bit um, you can use extra charge in the combat what helps you to deal more damage or what helps you to take out another enemy vehicle and uh, you have uh, more charges to use at the end of the match or in the combat overall which is very juicy 1900 hit points is you know okay uh, for a tier 9 heavy 380 meters view range finally we have some view range on this tank as well or on those jet booster tanks we're coming from tier 8 that had 350 into tier 9 that has 380 so now you are not crippled by the view range and you do not have to worry about that too much you're not forced to use ventilation for example once again it has some uh, uh, it has some uh, different setups what you could use uh, like ventilation rammer stabilizer you can use turbo stabilizer and rammer which i was uh, mostly using turbo stabilizer and rammer because the turbo simply boosts uh, your uh, top speed in both modes it gives you actually plus five in the standard mode you know if you're using for example bounty turbo or standard turbo uh, but it also gives you plus eight in the jet booster boat and this helps it out quite a bit it has one very annoying thing with the gun depression though at uh, on both sides left and right side where the frontal hull goes to the side hull the connection point in the front you know on the left side on the right side the frontal hull and the side hull connection point it has not minus eight degrees of gun depression what it has on the side and in the front but over there in those positions it has minus 4.5 and it has been quite annoying in many different positions because it is under basically perfect angle if you want to side scrape a bit in this vehicle or if you want to get you know a little bit of side peaking angle it is exactly over there and if you are not able to use your minus 8 degrees of counter pressure it is quite annoying right but uh, overall how i would rate this vehicle uh, if i compare it to all the other jet booster tanks i played before and even to the tier 10 i can even give it 7.5 and 8 out of 10 compared to uh, the uh, gaming experience and the enjoyment i had in this vehicle compared to the other jet booster tanks but if i compare this tank to e75 or let's say 50 db which are very good tanks uh, you know one of the best uh, tier 9 heavy tanks in the game uh, 7 out of 10 um, 6.9 out of 10 once again maybe but uh, overall i can definitely say i quite enjoyed this tank and finally, BZ75, the cherry on the top of the cake. What you have actually seen on my channel a couple times before already when I was testing it out on the test server because at first it came out with a lot better mobility then they decided to nerf it. They nerfed at the top speed actually quite a bit uh, because uh, previously in the uh, jet booster mode or in the turbo mode it was able to go uh, over 63 or 62 kilometers per hour which was uh, quite ridiculous and uh, quite fun I guess can say at least on the death server but how is this tank on the live server in its final released form uh, guys yeah the gun once again we have to talk about the gun because it is it feels like it is unnecessarily derpy like it is one of the least um, how to put it uh, it is one of the least reliable guns or uh, I never know if I'm able to hit the easy shots or not. You can have battles where you hit all the snapshots and you are the luckiest player alive. Just snapshot after snapshot, hit, 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 not even full aimed in shots. And then there are battles where you do not even hit any fully aimed in shots, which are from medium actually from close to your medium range sometimes you know let's not even talk about the long range shots because those are always with those type of guns i understand that those are always tricky to hit and comes down to the rng but yeah the gun being so unreliable is just not fun i have to say overall wargaming did a good job right they did not release another overpowered tank they did not uh, release a completely broken tank which they have to nerf 
a couple batches later. We can definitely say that this was a step in the right direction when introducing the Tech Tree line, but the problem is uh, the tanks we already have in the game, and uh, the problem is uh, the armoring of this vehicle at the same time as well. Like, for example, if we look at uh, the turret armoring, it has three. Let's call them commander hatches. Three different positions where people are easily able to penetrate you. The commander hatches are very easily penetrable. Plus, uh, then there is the middle plate as well, which uh, versus tier 10 vehicles, uh, tier 9 tanks as well, is very easily penetrable. So, uh, to use some kind of skill to hide your weak spots, it is impossible because you need three different guns to block all your, <laughs> you know, commander hatches uh, to wiggle with your turret. Uh, because there, is, there are just way too many positions uh, uh, to hide, to protect, like if you wiggle, yes, you're making the commander hatches harder to hit because they are moving a bit more uh, than the center blade, but, you know, once you wiggle, then just aim at the center blade, uh, the center commander hatch, and uh, you are still able to get the penetration out of that uh, easily, quite easily, I can say so. So the armoring, uh, well, seems like this simply didn't go for the heavily armored Haldon vehicle approach on BZ-75, which is nice because, once again, I didn't want to see another completely uh, broken uh, Haldon tank. But uh, then if you, ha if you add um, so many weak spots, maybe the gun handling could be a bit better, right? Overall, I can say I definitely did not hate the vehicle. I don't think it is uh, garbage. I quite enjoyed playing with it, but uh, at the same time, it was quite frustrating to get uh, penetrated everywhere, like by almost everything, right? Now, mobility, yeah, sure. mobility, I would say is uh, quite okay. Yeah, outside the jet booster mode, it is sluggish. Yes, it is sluggish, but inside the jet booster mode, if you have turbo on it, for example, if you have uh, the maxed out field mods as well, it can go up to 37 or up to 55 in the jet booster mode and that gives it uh, nice flexibility at the end of the matches, at the start of the matches once again, uh, catching up with the damage or uh, using uh, those uh, boosters in the combat maneuvers, uh, which I have done a lot actually, trying to get uh, quick flanking shots or trying to dodge artillery and I would say all those tanks are made for the uh, artillery skill as well. How is it called? You know, what shows the lines when the artist shot is uh, coming towards you. Because in those tanks, you can actually, if you have, let's say, 200-ish hit points left, in those tanks, you can actually use the jet booster and accelerate out from the artist splash when you see those uh, things uh, happening, when you see and the artist shell coming towards you, you actually have that reaction time to boost yourself out and uh, to not get blasted away if you have low HP and if you have some boosts left. So this is a very unique thing about those tanks definitely to mention over here. It has saved me many times. Um, honestly, I have used it many times simply versus artillery and uh, this is why I uh, unlocked uh, the skill on my commander as well. Do not overuse your boosts at the start of the battle. What I see many, many bz 75s too, who boost into the first position and then they spend, uh, let's say, 10 seconds waiting for the enemies. Uh, because why would you boost yourself into there, uh, into that position uh, so early before anyone else, you know, even logically is able to get there with their right? Uh, the hit points, it has a nice chunky amount of hit points, 2500 base hit points if you have it maxed uh, field mode, uh, it gets the passive hit point bonus as well, you can boost it up to 2630 and if you're using improved hardening on the top of that, you can get almost 2900, which is nice and uh, uh, counters the amount of weak spots in the turret at least, I guess this is one of the reasons why they gave it the 2500 base hit points, which is nice. Right, so BZ-75, uh, as I said before, I did not hate the vehicle, but uh, there are so many other Tyrton heavy tanks uh, where I feel like I need to work a lot less to get the same amount of damage, to get the same result. I don't know. Does it make sense, guys, what I'm trying to say over here? Hopefully it does. It is nice to see that uh, it is balanced. But also the question is, why should you play this tank over VZ-55? Why should you play this tank uh, this over 60DP, IS-7277, Grunman, um, many other tanks, M4, you know. 
Can we compare it to M4 or not? Um, I guess why should you play it over those tanks is the jet booster feature, which is unique for BZ50. Sorry, 75. BZ75. So overall, how I would rate this compared to the other tier 10 heavies, maybe 6.5 out of 10, 7 out of 10 to be polite over here, because I had some fun battles in it, I had some good time in it. I can't say I didn't have, a good, I cannot say I only had bad time in it, but I had some very uh, frustrating battles in it definitely as well. But uh, just my two cents about all of those vehicles in one video. Let me know what you think about this entire line yourself, uh, which tank is your favorite. Please do let me know in the comment section down below where you can also find thumbs up button or thumbs down button depending how you enjoyed today's video. That is me done. I get you next time with something else. Stay awesome, stay beautiful, stay naked, take care and bye.